I have a boyfriend that's whipped. He let me do whatever the fuck I want to do. Have sugar daddies, but spoiled is. Spoiler, spoiler. I can I'm still be you. You take care of me, but it, yeah, I would never disrespect him. Yeah, because That's yeah, you know your ass might get cut out. What up, YouTube? I am your host, mediocre tutorials and reviews. Back in here with one more video, <laughs> guys. You're looking at the thumbnail. You took a look at the title. You already know what time it is. It is time to get active. Shout out to Content Creator. It's complicated YouTube channel. I've done his videos in the past. His channel has been growing substantially. Shout out to the team. Shout out to the MTR team. You guys going over there and showing him some love. I think he deserves it. He's working hard over there. Okay. I'll leave a link to this video down in the description box down below as well. Title this video, Independent Women and Biology. Rules of Modern Dating and Understanding Women. I saw the title of this and I was like, ooh, he's got a good one. So let's go in, let's get active. Without further ado. Since the beginning of ancient times, you know, men were set to provide and protect. Women were set to bear the children and take care of the household. Yep. So in modern day, I mean, when it comes to women, you have to just understand that they want a guy that could take care of them. Just the way it is. A lot, of, a lot of women complain about being objectified sexually, right? Uh -huh. But do you think that women objectify men financially and do the same yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. So how is that different than like just a loose force? How is that not prostitution in, in a way? Oh, because, um, let me think. Let me answer that. Yeah. Yeah, because you ain't had no answer. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? Okay, let me just say, I'm a preacher's kid. And I, as a kid, your daddy tell you like, when my, dad, my, my daddy always tell me, if he can't afford to take you out for a steak dinner, he ain't the man for you. Y'all put that shit in our head since forever. When men take their daughters the like old to get they like their nails done and they pedicures, they take them on like daddy daughter dates. First thing they say is, I want to teach her how a man should treat her. Exactly. So, like, how so that prostitution since I was a little it's girl. Only pro it, been, that's called a straw man argument, which she just did. She totally evaded the the question. She wasn't asking you how your daddy may put it in your mind that you should have a man pay for a steak dinner. The question was specific to objectifying men based off of the amount of money in their bank account. That was the question. Been teaching me that a man should court me and, and, and date me a certain a certain kind of way. I should look I feel a like, certain caliber of man. Of course, I feel like it's only prostitution if we make a deal like, oh, it's $400 to f me. No, exactly. if I'm telling you, oh, you have to do, do this, then the third, that's because I came from a household where my daddy did it. So when, when my daddy passed me on to the next man, that means you could take care of me. So I is when you put it on the brown, I put it there. Fair enough. Okay, I'm, I'm glad we, we clear that up. Um, okay. Now my question is, okay, um, a lot of women nowadays say they want a, a guy who's a sugar daddy. I got a sugar daddy. Do you think it's hypocritical? <laughs> you can't make this shit up! <laughs> What? Uh, what? Holy moly, you can't make this up. Having a sugar daddy is prostitution. <laughs> that is prostitution. You're exchanging the goodies for money. So bump what your daddy told you. Everything that your daddy told you, you just threw it out the window. But you had the nerve to use as a component of your argument to explain the objectivity off of a man's wallet away? Welcome to the modern woman. This is what we're out here dealing with. This. This is not all, not all, not all. And certainly it's not the ones that I, <laughs> that I keep around me in my space. But check down in the comments section. You're going to see a lot of dudes down in there. <laughs> just, this is what we've been talking about. Holy moly. I, shout out to the interviewer. I don't know how he keeps a straight face <laughs> during his interviews, but keep doing it, my G, because on the back end, we're going to continue to tear this up. You understand what I'm saying? Let's keep going. For uh, parents to advise their sons to avoid gold diggers. Oh, but was that him? Uh, advise their daughters to find a man who will take care, know how to take care of them. Do you think that's that's fair advice? Should be independent, whether it's a female or a boy. Okay. 
a daughter or a son, you should teach your kids how to be independent. For the women who say, like, you know, I'm a strong, independent woman, right? Mm -hmm. If women are so strong and independent, why does the pressure of marriage and commitment typically come from women? Mm. Because it's all a facade. Facts. <laughs> it's not It's not real. I mean, look, you can sit there and act like you're the most confident, independent person in the world, but if your parents are still picking up your tab for college, your apartment, your car payment, your insurance, are you really an independent, strong woman? Right. Probably not. So, He's cool. in your opinion... And let me also comment on the, uh, on the, I apologize for pausing it this much, but this is a really good one. But um, the, the last lady said that you should be independent no matter if you're a man or a woman. And I think like, um, yeah, to a degree, you should be able to support yourself. But where it switches is when you talk about relationships. When we talk about relationships and the roles of that. I think being independent from a support yourself perspective, right, as you are coming of age is well and good. But when it comes to the role that you take within a relationship, if you still have this independent mindset, um, what happens is, is that you will not get the dudes that will want to take care of you. And we find out time and time again that the ones that want to take care of you follow a much more traditional mindset. They don't want you to work. All right. They want you to be a helper in their business. Right. They want you to be uh, a helper in taking care of the family, the kids, the nurturer, right? They, they want you to do those things. So why, so if you want to be a modern woman and you want to, right, like, which is going against your biology, usually, you, usually you want hypergamy. Women don't want to date down. It's not a part of the evolutionary biology. So this whole modern woman-ish is going up and against their biology. That's why so many of them are so unhappy. Right. That's why we all got some aunties that are single as hell that it ain't happy. Every time you see him, you know, you're just like, oh, man, you you have an abyss of and a cloud that's just floating around you wherever you go because you're just carrying this weight of negativity because you lost out on your shots. Let's keep going. And what is the difference between a man who spoils his woman and a man who is whipped? Oh, whipped. OK, so you can spoil your woman and have, and have that respect level, have that, that aggression like. I've been spoiled by a man and it's like, you know, he kind of got me a check a little bit. Like, I know what I can and cannot say to him. I know I can't run over him. He has that respect level. Whip boots and just like, bitch. So Brandon's whipped. So who Brandon is definitely whipped. I have a boyfriend that's whipped. He let me do whatever the fuck I want to do. Have sugar daddies, but spoiled is. Spoiled is spoiled. I can still be, you, you take care of me, but it, yeah. I would never disrespect him. Yeah, because, that's yeah, you know your ass might get cut out. Why is it okay for Brandon. Oh. If anyone knows Brandon, send him, send him the content on this channel. All right. I would wholeheartedly appreciate that. What's up? With just the pure audacity, the, the pure audacity, right? To just go up here and just talking about like, like it's, it's disgusting. And this is what the culture has pushed. I and deep, all of that. I don't cook. I don't clean. I don't, right, right. <laughs> money make me, money, money make me, I mean, name the goddamn song, I mean, name the goddamn song, name, <laughs> name the, the person in pop culture that pushes these thoughts and our ideologies, but then you go and find out, you look at their lives, they're either A, unhappy as hell, or they don't actually live what they speak about, or they don't actually live that, it's just to make money off of the culture. They're appropriating the culture in order to make money off of the culture and don't bring people to the truth. So they have the confidence to talk like this and to leave lives just like this. She's got a boyfriend and a sugar daddy. However, Brandon allows this to happen. Untuck your nuts. Jesus. Some women do expect a man to still do <laughs> traditional manly things like fix stuff and pay bills, protect, provide. But the minute he expects her to cook and clean traditional woman things, that's seen as sexist. I think that's one of those things that also just depends on, on the particular parties involved. I mean, obviously, the way that you grew up or what you saw in your household growing up is going to determine whether you see that as something that's normal or taboo you know what i mean so if you i mean say you were raised by two lesbian moms and then you marry a dude who expects you to freaking cook and clean and do all this stuff all the time 
they probably were trying to make you, you know, a strong, independent woman because you didn't have that necessarily like father figure in your life. So I think it all, it really just depends on, on the circumstances that you grew up in. Um, if there was one thing that you wish more women understood about men, what would that be? Um, to be honest, that we want just more than one of you. Like we can't be confined and it is just, we're gonna keep circling right back around trying to do the same concepts of monogamy. I don't really believe in monogamy. I feel like men are naturally polygamous uh, and then that's why it doesn't work. And just, you try to tie us down into a domestic relationship and we act like that's yeah. what we want and that's what we're satisfied and we have to play a cat and mouse dance and lie and tell yeah. you, but secretly when you walk away, oh, we're looking over here and over there. And then we end up getting in trouble and then we end up losing our women. And that's why the divorce rate is so high, I believe. <laughs> why do you uh, j just real quick, this brother right here hit on so many goddamn points and shout out to Kevin Samuels as well. I think his stream topics uh, uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago had to do with uh, high value men that cheat. And here's the thing. I think the modern woman is going to have three options, really. It's either A, get with a high value dude and allow some cheating to occur. And, you know, and it, it depends on the definition of cheating, you know, because if you have a conversation about it, then is it really cheating? Right. Uh, B, settle. Right. Reduce your delusion and understand what you actually qualify for. Right. Or end up alone. Right. Shepherding cats throughout the rest of your life. It's really it's really just those three options. I mean, to find a high value. Number one, for you to find a high value dude as rare it is, as that is. But to find one that doesn't also want to relive the uh, quintessential feeling of new new, <laughs> which is I mean, I mean, I'll keep it honest with you guys, even from my. My perspective, that's one of the reasons I've been single is what as long as what I have over the past shit, 15 years or so is because like I, at the end of the day, I, I know that, man, that feeling of that new new, <laughs> there's something special. There's something special about that feeling and the thought of, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm not a liar at the end of the day. Like, so I'm not going to put myself in a relationship when I know that I like that feeling of conquesting uh, something new. I just I mean, it just is what it is. So. But yeah, I think it's going to be relatively three different options um, for them. And I think that the longer that they can go without understanding the reality of what the modern situation has placed them in, the worst off for them. So let's keep it rocking. Do you think that there are some men who struggle with commitment? Because um, they're broke as f and they're lame as f and they're gay as f Next question. Okay, okay. Uh, she's a, that's a toxic lady. That's a toxic lady. That's the same one before that has a sugar daddy and then also has a boy toy, a boyfriend that she toys around with. Um, abyss level thinkers and people like that, like you have to remove yourself from. That. That's an abyss, that's an abyss uh, scummy person. All right. That is a that is a scumbag. OK, you got to understand that there's some dudes that will look at her personality type. Oh, man, she's a strong. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go in the other direction. Go the other way. I'm trying to tell you. Right. She's the type of personality type. You know what I'm saying? You meet her out in Vegas. You guys are having a good old night. She's saying whatever she's got to say. You say whatever you got to say. She comes back to the room. Y'all drinking, blah, blah, blah. Right? Y'all have a little bit of fun. You wake up in the morning and your wallet's gone. <laughs> your, your wallet's gone. Gone. Trip ruined. That's the type. Let's keep it going. What was surprising to you, something that you learned about men in your experiences, just dealing with men, dating, relationships? There's no such thing as a loyal man. Every man cheats. So, so do you think that men are only as loyal as their options? Yep. Do you think that do you th do you think that people are just only as loyal as their options, including women as well? Yep, I think so too. Yeah, men are. We, we, listen, let me also talk about this. We've also created a society where men get shamed for their biology, meaning uh, men want a lot and a vast number of viscous innards, and we've created this construct of monogamy. And you know, I, I think like w what it does and uh, is doesn't allow men the freedom of their expression to a degree, right? You name the next uh, uh, country on the Eastern Hemisphere that is like monogamy. What, what are you talking about? What <laughs> I want all of these wives. You know what I'm saying? So 
But it is what it is. You know, this is the construct that we live in. And I do think that there is actually some um, advantages of monogamy. But when it comes to a, a man's cardinal need to conquer and conquest and get the most and be competitive with it and to skewer the most amount of viscous innards that they can. Monogamy isn't the fit for that, but let's keep it rocking. Biologically disgusting and they're biologically liars. It takes the right woman to come into their lives even and mold the right, their bitch asses. Oh, oh no, oh, even when males. the right woman come into their life, they still cheat. Cause they're dumb as they wait until they know they about to lose that one. And I they want to cry and shit. Don't right. cry Do you think, okay, tell me this. Them. Do you think you were talking about cheating, right? When somebody che okay, when somebody cheats on their lover, right? Do you typically blame the one who cheats or the one who drove the other one to cheat? At the same time, it takes two. You feel me? So you obviously doing something that made me cheat. I ain't gonna cheat with the bottom of the barrel. I'm gonna cheat on somebody that's better than you. Why didn't you just Why didn't you just leave? Nobody can make you cheat. You right? Who do you think? God, a, there's so many masculine qualities. Let me also clarify this, guys. When I say masculine, when I say masculine and feminine, you also have to understand that, you know, not all masculine traits are positive. There's some negative masculine uh, traits, right? So, you know, we have to think about that. So when I say, you know, someone is, a, a woman is demonstrating masculine characteristics, usually when I say that, it's from the negative tier of those masculine traits all right so when i say negative it's things such as you know extreme aggression right as opposed to assertiveness which is a positive masculine trait right you understand what i'm saying so so keep all of that uh, in mind when i talk about man she's got some masculine characteristics because i see comments in there like don't describe her as masculine that's saying that there's something wrong with masculinity no there's positive masculine positive feminine and then negative masculine and a negative feminine something like negative feminine traits is like um being a manipulator that's w women can do that and they can do that well within their femininity but that's a negative feminine trait okay but let's keep it rocking kind of sets the rules in relationships you know the boundaries it depends on the kind of relationship do you think it's true that the one who loves the other one less is the one who has the control in a relationship i never thought about that I don't think so, but sometimes kind of. Sometimes kind of? Okay. Yeah. But like toxic, but... What, is, what are the characteristics of a toxic person? Ooh, um, someone who makes you feel guilty or bad about things that you shouldn't feel bad about. A lot of guys, guys are just more... Uh... Just, just let me also comment on this, you know. Um, just, just right now, just think about the demeanor of the two black women as they were speaking about relationships and men. Versus the demeanor of the uh, Caucasian woman speaking about it as well. Which one there do you think that demonstrates femininity better? I'll leave that question for you guys. Comment down in the comment box down below. Um, thirstier than females are. Females will rather seek out their options. And they have a lot of options. So they piggyback off of different guys. It's just the truth, man. I've seen it myself. Okay. And uh, doesn't having more options in dating give women the privilege of being more picky? Hell, half the time they don't even have to be picky. You know, but the options, yeah, the options give them an opportunity to see exactly what they want and to fill their needs at that time. So if they have more options, they, they're able to fulfill their needs a lot faster. Do you think women are biologically driven to seek out the highest value man they can attract? specifically the best protector and provider. Yes. So that's biological, that's in their DNA, right? Right, that's, every woman is like that. Every woman is in their DNA. Every woman wants the best option she could possibly find. You know, uh, physically, you know, uh, society has made us think that the dad bod is a thing. No, girls like guys with abs, guys with nice bodies, you know, it's all propaganda. So they want the best option they could possibly find, the most money, whatever. Why wouldn't they? I mean, that's what they want. If you are seeking uh, um, someone to provide, why wouldn't you want the best one to do it? So um, you can't be mad at women because they want a rich man or they want the, 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 no, the, the athlete. They, they want the strong the guy. Like, they, want the, they want the dominant alpha male. You know what I'm saying? So um, why wouldn't they go for the best of what, what they can get? That's just with anything else in life. It doesn't have to be the opposite sex. It could be with like food. If I'm if I, if I want a burger, I want the best damn burger there is, right? So I mean, Facts. you can't be mad at somebody for wanting the best. So I feel like it flips on the other side. So you can't be mad at men for wanting 
the best of what we want. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So do you think that's natural or learned behavior? I think that's biological. Man. I, think that's, biological. I, I think that's in us but Great from birth. I feel like um, a, as an infant, you you want to seek the the most efficient <laughs> protection of survival. And do you think that men are biologically wired to reproduce and spread their seed with as many women as possible? Man, that's a good question. Yes, yes, they are. We are. I'm not going to do that because I value my seed, but... He told us to uh, be good fruitful answer. and multiply. Um, I don't think that was... I mean, how could we be so fruitful and multiply if I were to get a woman pregnant? It, it's nine more months until I can get her pregnant again. Mm-hmm. But biologically, me, I can go get someone pregnant again in the next five minutes. So being fruitful and multiply, I think that, that, that the monogamy just goes out the window with that. Okay, <laughs> so then I was my next question, you jumped the gun here. Wouldn't the expectation of monogamy be asking a man to deny his biological instinct to reproduce? Mm. That's the problem with life. That's the main problem with everything wow. because we are Great not able to be our natural selves. We have to pretend, we have to lie, we have to act like, even though we do love our women, we act like that's all that we want and it's not. Even my love for you and how strong I want to provide and protect for you, I want to love and provide and protect for her too. Monogamy is learned behavior. Okay. So if that's true, why are women allowed to, to fulfill the their biological destiny to seek out the highest value man, but we're not allowed to fulfill our biological destiny to reproduce? That's really deep, bro. That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. Because we're living in a women-driven society where mm. they rule. Um, just for example, look at uh, um, the, the statistics for... Uh, uh, child support and, and things like that. How many women take advantage of mm-hmm. the, the catering to women that, that, that get the benefits from that? How many women are just being lazy and get to collect checks okay. and everything because they know that the government and men are going to provide for them. If they didn't have those luxuries, then they would have to figure something else out. They would have to survive in a different way, but they're able to be more relaxed and, and, and able to make the choices and not hold themselves accountable. (laughs) Wow. You know, what's interesting. Um, You know, I don't think in totality we're in a woman driven society or men's driven society. I think that there's some checks and balances put in place in order to continue the evenness of that. But within the black community, I think it is more so of a matriarchal society without question, without doubt. I mean, just think about uh, who's mostly raising young girls and young boys. I mean, think about tropes such as big mama's house and stuff like that. It's not a big papa's house or nothing like that. It's a big mama's house. You you know, the matriarch is, you know, deemed in high esteem and high regard in the majority of black families. I think it is much more of a matriarchal uh, society, which is why I think you can get so much of our popular culture and media that push the images, right? The excuse me, the indicators that I've talked about earlier in this video through our our culture, our media, what have you. And it's literally we are the only race that that is that is like that. It's it's a thing within the black community. I think a lot of it is because we are in a matriarchal complex within us. So let's just move on. Only a little bit more to go. This video is getting long. (laughs) It's, It's the whole like woman power thing. You know, it's it's a, it's, it's uh, talked about. It. Yeah, it's a whole woman power thing. Like, why can't we do that? You right, know, right, right. But but I'm just saying, women have a lot of power, and yet they feel like they have no power. Well, that's a, that's mm. that's a thing. They use that for power. The fact that they have no power is the power that they're using against. You know, it's like right. it, it's a it's a it's, it's a Jedi the, they, mind, they, they mind have, trick. They have yeah. the privilege of being victims. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like it's like race, right? You pull that black card, pull yeah, that white card, right, pull right. that Jew card, whatever. Right. It's the right. same thing. Exactly. No, I'm yeah. Jewish, and I yeah. do I get to go to German people and say, <laughs> exactly I don't need money, you know? Exactly. It's right. over with. Right. Right. But exactly. but this is the new trend. Like of this course. wasn't like this in the 50s. Sure. It wasn't like this in the 60s, right. Eight, right. maybe 80s. It's like 90. Social media right. started right. the whole thing, the whole woman movement. Right. That's right. it. Of it's course. social media. Yeah. 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 You know, all you got all the celebrities talking about like. You know, independence and started from Beyonce, like, you know, I and D E, right? Started from there and it just yeah. kept on, you know, Cardi B like talking right. about, you know, right. shit. All sounds the like time me. You're- uh, let, just real quick, let me comment on that as well. Um, what they were talking about is this victimhood, which I talked I talked to you guys about ad nauseum on the channel. Uh, that um, within the social media 
epidemic. Um, this victimhood has it, this power of being a victim is so strong. It's so strong because you begin to talk, tug at the emotional heartstrings of the population that is looking at it. And, you know, he was talking about different cards outside of just gender or whatever. Um, but it's so strong. And I think that it's so detrimental because it's so convincing in a push in propaganda. It's so convincing. And what it, and what it does is that the people that are um, pushing this victimhood and then the receivers of those that can identify with what they are saying begin to get clouded in the way that they make decisions going into the future. And then that victimhood becomes a part of their being and they just rest with within that. The problem is, is that you can use that victimhood to dwell in this manufactured state of unhappiness, right? And you never feel empowered to make a change. You never feel empowered to make a difference. And you blame all of your issues on this perceived victimhood that you have placed yourself in. It's absolutely terrible mentality because you are enslaving yourself to an ideology which will not help you pursue forward. All right, guys, listen, I, I'm going to stop going over this reaction because I want you guys to go over to the brother's channel. He does fantastic work. There's a lot of time left in this video. So go over there and see what else they have in store. Um, last thing that I wanted to comment on. Listen, um, you, you, what we've called out time and time again is the evolution of the traditional wom woman to the modern woman and to see how from a modern perspective how they're not getting their evolutionary scratches itched and then it's ending off in so much unhappiness within them because of what they are requesting with this change in society. Uh, it makes me want to just, you know, it, it, inevitably what I think we what we have to do is to toss these ideas up in the air to give women a selection. Like, yeah, maybe being modern is what exactly that you want but what about this traditional thing over here <laughs> that that's not popular it's not it's just not popular there's no marketing behind the traditional it's not cool anymore it's not cool to be it's cool to be a boss but, but it's not cool to be someone who cooks a fantastic tuna casserole you understand what i'm saying you guys got to turn down the delusion uh, and I think you got to look at your rules. I think you got to look at your rules like monogamy. I don't I don't know that you can necessarily request and require monogamy of the top apex man because you're you're requesting that they give off uh, up something that genuinely can make them happy. Like, yeah, you might find a needle in a haystack that only wants you right for the rest of time. But that is rare. That is rare. It's super rare. It's not like that new new. All right, guys, uh, that's when I end this video. Again, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Fantastic video. Fantastic video. I want to continue to support him so he makes more of these, all right? <laughs> As we keep going over them. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Media, tutorials, and reviews at gmail.com. Guys, feel free to hit me up. Got an Instagram. Make sure you go follow me. I've been posting up there, all right? Last but not least, I got a Patreon. I got to figure out how to move my Patreon when I'm talking about Patreon to the beginning of the videos because I feel like so many people I lose by this stage of the video as per my YouTube analytics. I got to somehow put it in the beginning. But the community is growing. The community is building. Um, there's so many dope people that's up there. If you guys have noticed, I haven't really been live streaming like that anymore. It's because I've been trying to put more time back into my community to be able to go up live with them like whenever I want. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this information that we talk about can continue to flood them within their lives so they can continue to enhance their path and walk of life forward. I think that it's super necessary. All right. Until next time, YouTube.